Hi, I'm Senya. Uh, my Chinese name is Xie Xin Yi. Uh, I think uh, I always try to know myself better because I want to um, I, I want to uh, there's a, a sentence there's a word to say that listen to your heart um, many people will say this sentence and I think most people just far away from far away from that and I want to uh, keep uh, keep the noise in my head out of, out of my head and I think there's some there's many ways to to um, to let let people can reach our uh, approach our heart, but uh, I think the dream is to know our dream is a interesting way to know about myself better because the dream gave our uh, the dream gave give us many picture and many feelings and I think um, we we always we always teach to do many things by follow many rules but now to do things just just um, by our own way so I think uh, if I if I can know what I want and what I need, I can I can do. Um, if I, I I can know what I want and what I need, I don't need to take others' advice. I can do things well. In in more natural way. And I I like the part in the course that to listen others dream. I think it's interesting that we can see others um, we can see how others unconsciousness create a dream. Anything else? Mm. Well, I think to know ourselves better is important because we can keep ourselves more real. That's it. Um. You talked about just following other people's way versus our own way. And there's a great Indian um, wise man named J. Krishnamurti. And he has a sentence. He says, truth is a pathless land. When you get to the place of truth, there's no path. There's no path that someone else went before you. You've gone to the end of those paths, and you're in a pathless land. That's truth. It's like a wilderness. And you are the only one that can go the right way. In a way, it's almost like being lost. So that, that's the sort of supports what you say. Now, um, let me ask you a question. OK, this is a good question. This is, this is not an easy question. <clears throat> now, do you know, you know Chuang Tzu? Do you know Chuang Tzu, the Chinese, the great Chinese? Yes. OK, now, the story of the butterfly, do you know the butterfly dream? He had a butterfly dream. Could you tell us a story? Uh, 
don't remember the date. You don't remember. It was a long time ago, 2,500 yes. years ago. Yes. <laughs> but uh, um, who can tell us that story, the Chuang Tzu's butterfly dream? Nobody knows? This, this is Chinese. This is, this is two people are mostly, you speak Chinese, you're Chinese culture. And you're at the university learning all kinds of Western ideas. But this is Chinese wisdom. And uh, today, China is fixated on Confucius and all that authoritarian business. But Lao Tzu and Chuang Tzu came before that, and they were very free and alive and profound. The world has never caught up with them, you know? As far as it's gone, the people in America who are at the very forefront of knowledge, they study Chuangs and Laos, they study those people. So, what's the butterfly story? Who knows? Who knows that story? Nobody in class? Uh, do you know the story? Do you know the story? No. Ted knows that I know. I, I don't think I really know the whole story. You know a piece of it? I know a piece of Okay, hold on, hold on. We've got a piece of the story here. Once we get a piece of the story, we move forward. Now tell us a piece, the butterfly dream. This is a dream from 2,500 years ago. The people in Taiwan in those days, I guess they were aborigines. Some people say the little black people used to live here before the aborigines. So this was a long time ago. And Chuang Tzu, was in China and he had a dream. Tell us uh, what you know, the piece. Um, I don't really, really sure, but uh, one day Zhang Zi, Zhang Zi dreamed about he became a butterfly and uh, he, he see he was sleeping. And after he wake up, he, the, he think, May, he, he don't know man is Zhuang Zi dream about the butterfly or the butterfly dream of the Zhuang Zi. That's exactly the story. So he, 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 has a, he wakes up in a dream that he's a butterfly fluttering around in the flowers and everything and he wakes up. Yes. And so suddenly he's struck with something. Am I a man dreaming I, I, I'm a butterfly or am I a butterfly who's now dreaming I'm a man? Now, so the question for you is, what, the, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of that story? What is the metaphorical meaning of that? How does it relate to the kinds of things you said, and the, the Sharon said, and the people have been talking about here? Any idea? I mean, why would that story last for 2,500 years when so many other stories have been forgotten and died away? These stories that last a long time, there's a reason. It says something really important. I think it's about philosophy. Like uh, we also people uh, in many years ago start thinking that who am I and this is what you're talking about now. Yeah. Who am I? Go yes. ahead. So I think Zhuang Zi is thinking about. Uh, what, uh, is he a man or a butterfly? That's it's true, but it's a metaphor. So I, I, I really doubt if he really entertained the notion he was a butterfly dreaming he was a man. I don't think a butterfly, but they, don't have, they have no evidence butterflies dream. Chickens dream, by the way, but uh, I don't know about butterflies. But the thing is, the idea, what the idea suggests, is which is more real, the dream or what we think when we're awake? And what, he, what he's saying, what he's saying is the dream could be more real. This could be the dream. That's what Buddha says. They're all the Buddhists in China, that's what they say. They don't believe in working with dreams the way we do. They said, they said well, what, what we're about is waking up from the dream. Well, hello, that's what we're about here in the dream group. We're about waking up from the dream. That's why we work with the dream, to wake up from the dream to become real. So Chuang Tzu was really saying, which is more real? Me, having dreamed I'm a butterfly, 
Or is that dream of being a butterfly more real? Now, of course, it's a metaphor. You know, a butterfly is a metaphor. But a butterfly is a very lively, colorful thing that can fly, you know. And Chuang Tzu was, was a very lively, colorful man whose mind could fly with beautiful ideas, beautiful writing, poetry. And so in a way, it's an interesting idea. And it ties in with, I think, what you said and what people have been talking about here. Do you want to say anything more? Or can we close you out? Do you want to take your mask off just a second so people can, when you're an ugly old person like me, you can look back, you show your grandchildren, see that beautiful girl in the video. That's me, that was, that was me, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a second. There she is. Okay, I'm going to turn you off now.